Hey YouTube, it's Steve. I'm back with another video and today I'm going to be breaking in my Red Weber Kettle Premium Limited Edition with some smoked pork chops. So stay tuned. So what I'm doing now is just going on ahead and opening up the wrapper or the package here for it. And like I said, it's about three pounds, uh, probably about seven or eight chops. And they're not that thick. They are bone in. But as you can see, they're probably about, I don't know, half to three quarters of an inch thick. So it's not going to take them that long on the grill. But I do want to go ahead and season them up so we can have some good flavor in them. All right, so as you can see here, it comes out to about six chops. I got three in uh, each tray here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit them up with a little bit of olive oil. Just using this as a binder for the... Uh, the rub that I'm going to be using. Sure, already know you don't really need a whole lot of this stuff. A little goes a long way. Just looking for enough to coat it so that the seasoning sticks to it. Because like I said, these are going to go back in the fridge for a couple more hours. So the first rub that I'm going to put on here is just a little bit of uh, SPG, a little salt, pepper, and garlic. And you just want to lightly coat them. These are not, like I said uh, earlier, these are not super thick. They're only about a half to three quarters of an inch thick so don't need a whole heck of a lot of this stuff. Plus, uh, like I said, I'm going to put another rub on top of this. Because I'm going to be smoking with a little cherry wood, cherry tends to give a nice reddish color. I'm going to use this rub here, Kansas City Touch of Cherry uh, Barbecue Rub. Uh, it also just adds really nice color to the meat as well as uh, tastes really good. And once you get that on there, you just want to kind of pat it in. You don't want to, even though this is called rub, you don't want to rub, uh, rub this thing. You just want to get it on there and pat it in. to this next pan here and once you get one side done just flip it over and repeat the process all right so now that I've got these seasoned up I'm going to let them sit for a couple minutes they're already starting to sweat a little bit as that rub is starting to sink into the meat uh, in a couple minutes I'm going to wrap these up throw them back in the fridge and let them sit in there for a couple of hours and then we're going to uh, head out to the grill and smoke them so while these chops are over here marinating before I throw them back in the fridge a little bit, I figured I'd give you just a little bit of the backstory as to why I decided to get the Weber kettle and um, whatnot. So like most people, I have fond memories of barbecuing in the backyard uh, back from when I was a kid. And I've been doing it on my own probably close to 20 years, but really within the last couple years, um, just learning more about smokers, uh, how to manage temperature, and different recipes and things like that. Um, probably what, about 17 years ago I got here to where I'm in Virginia now and I was in the military at the time and I actually had a little uh, the, the small Weber, I can't remember the uh, the really small Weber uh, kettle that has the three those legs. You just sit it on the ground you can carry it around. It's really portable. Um, I had one of those and I kind of wanted to step my game up. Um, but at the time, the only grill that I knew or was familiar with was the Weber kettle. So I actually bought one of those, the regular 22, uh, 22-inch Weber kettle. And I kept that, uh, like I said, I was in the military. I kept that until after I got out, um, up until probably about 2007, 2008, somewhere in there. I bought my house in 2007 and I bought the smoker that I've been smoking on either 2007, 2008. Um, didn't really know any better. Uh, like I said, the only grill that I was familiar with was the Weber kettle. And the only thing that I knew about that, which is something that I will come to appreciate much later on, is that that thing holds temperature. I mean, I didn't know, like I said, anything about 
uh, managing temperature, all I knew is when I got finished smoking on it, that thing would stay hot. I didn't know anything about managing the vents or anything. I just knew after I took my meat off hours later, it would still be burning uh, the charcoal. Um, so, like I said, when I bought my house, I bought a char griller smoking pro, figuring I was stepping up and I was getting a cane grill, you know, it was an offset smoker. I thought it looked pretty cool having the firebox off to the side and everything. And I actually did what amounts to giving my Weber kettle away. Yeah, I took it and set it out with the trash. So whoever got that, uh, I hope you to this day still getting some great use out of it. Um, but shortly after I did that, I started regretting almost instantly. Um, the Char Grilly, and I'm not knocking Char Grilly as a company, I think they've come a long way. But this particular grill, the Smoking Pro uh, with the offset firebox, I had problems just sometimes getting it up to temperature or sometimes uh, just managing heat and everything. The thing is a monster when it comes to fuel consumption. I mean, even within the last couple of years after I got serious about really um, smoking uh, and everything like that, I just found that it was a bear. Um, it, it, it used a lot of charcoal, burned a lot of wood, and the food that I got was good. Uh, don't get me wrong, um, I haven't had any complaints from my family. They've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. And I will say that I learned a lot as far as managing temps and things like that. So I am thankful for that. But um, like I said, I've regretted getting rid of that kettle. And I've regretted it more so after I um, started watching a lot of videos on YouTube and reading a lot of articles. And I've always wanted to get one. Um, and then just last year, a few months or so ago, they came out with the limited edition red kettle. And it's got elements of my favorite colors, which are red and black. The kettle itself is red. The ash pan is black. They upgraded the wheels on it. Um, they're still plastic wheels, but they're to me, they're, they're sturdier than the basic wheels that used to come on the kettle years ago. Um, I just really enjoyed it and I saw a lot of you on YouTube with it posting pictures and cooking on it and just kind of bided my time. Uh, I remember when they came out they were $1.99 and then there was a lot of a big fuss about the quality of it um, and I got mine. Um, I will say that there are no, I don't have any quality issues with it. Um, a lot of people have posted on different forums about oh it's made in China this that, and the other um, and I'll say this. if it's that big of a current concern. I mean, we're talking about barbecue. We're not talking about something, um, well, in some ways, I guess barbecue can be life-changing, but we're not talking about life and death here. So if your concern is it's made in China, then don't purchase it. And with that being said, I'm going to get off my little political soapbox or whatever. But um, I got it. And I've already seasoned it, I've enjoyed it, and I've been looking forward to getting out here and firing it up and uh, smoking some meats on it. And today is the first opportunity since I've had it. I mean, I, the day I actually got it, I went ahead and seasoned it, but it was raining. It was drizzling off and on. Um, so now, today is the first day we've got where the sun's been out for a minute, and it's actually pretty warm. I think it's about s between 60 and 70 degrees outside. So I am pumped. I'm really ready to do this. So after these sit in the refrigerator for a couple of hours and chill a little bit, we're going to head out back on the patio. So stick around. All right, so we're out here at the grill. I got a couple of pieces of the cherry wood I'm just going to dump here on the back. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and preheat this grill, get it up to about 225 before we put our pork chops on. I'm going to start out with all of my vents wide open so I can get maximum airflow. And we will make adjustments as we go. Alright, so as soon as I'm ready to toss the chops on, I'll be right back. Alright, so we're back. We got temp stabilized at about 290. I was planning on doing a kind of low and slow cook, and we'll see how that goes. I kind of play it by ear. But here they are. You ready to slap these on the grill now? And I kind of set this up a little backwards from the way I intended to. I'll explain what I mean here in a second. Kind of doing these indirect. So I don't want to put them directly over the coals, at least not now, not yet. Alright, so what I meant by putting this the lid on here backwards 
is what I want to do is I want to have the I want to be able to see the thermometer but I want the the vents here uh, set in such way that the coals the smoke and fire coming off the coals goes over the meat before coming out of the vents and I didn't really think that all the way through before I came out here so now I've got the lead on backwards the thermometer is on the back side but the coals are back there the coals and the uh, wood and while it is coming across the meat and it's going to have to do that before it exits out the fact of the matter is if I want to see what temperature I'm at I'm going to have to walk around the back side it's not a big problem but just something to think about so what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to leave them on here until they reach an internal temperature of about 140 degrees now before that happens I want to come out here at about uh, 130 and hit them with a little sauce and everything and then let that kind of uh, bake into it for the last uh, 10 degrees or so and once that happens I'll show you what the finished product looks like so stick around so I'm using my uh, eye grill. I've got it connected to my iPhone here. Didn't take uh, too long. These have only been on about five or ten minutes, and they're already at 105 degrees, 106, and they're climbing pretty rapidly. So in probably another 10 degrees or so, I'm going to flip them, and then another four or five degrees after that, I'm going to go ahead and sauce these up. And I'm anticipating these will probably be done probably within the next, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes or so. But I just wanted to show you that and show you how quick the uh, temperature is rising with this thing. Alright, so we just hit 130 degrees. I'm getting ready to go ahead and flip them and go ahead and put them directly over the coals. They're looking and smelling good. What I'm doing right now is I put some sauce on them. They're going to roll for two minutes. I'm flipping them, putting a little more sauce on them, and then we're going to call them done. And with this, we are done. These are looking and smelling all kinds of yum. I know you're wondering why I'm not using tongs, but the tongs that I had use them when these were raw. And the ones that I normally use once the meat's finished are nowhere to be found right now. Wow, I even got one that fell apart on me. Check that out. Alright, we're going to let these go in rest a little bit and then we'll do a taste test. Hey guys I'm back and these have rested for about 30 minutes and I'm ready to do a final taste test on these and let you know what I think but first check that out I know I showed them to you when they first came off the grill but here they are now these are some juicy looking chops and here it is didn't get too much of a smoke ring on there but then again it wasn't on there long enough for all of that so let's take a taste And again, while they were not on there that long, there's a really, really good smoky flavor in these. Mm. And a little more. Mm. Sorry guys, but these are awesome. These are good. So before I get out of here real quick, I'm going to recap what I did. Season them up with a little SPG and a touch of cherry um, smoking rub marinated them in the fridge for a couple of hours then put them on the grill we started out at uh, 290 and we were I was originally trying to hit 225 but I messed around overshot the temp and normally these are cooked at about 295 well at about 350 to 450 when you're doing them uh, fast I was intending on doing a low and slow so 290 was fine um, I had them on there a total probably about 30 minutes and once they hit about 130 or so I went out and I sauced them flipped them over and seared them 
uh, for two minutes and then flipped them back over, sauced them, seared them for a final two minutes, and that boosted these up uh, to about 145. Actually, they were a little more than that when I took them off. Brought them in the house, let them rest for about 30 minutes, and now we're taking this taste test now, which these came out excellent. Um, so thanks for sticking with me through this video. If you guys have any questions, any comments, or anything like that, drop that down in the comment section below. If you like the video, please do hit that like button. And if you haven't done so, uh, please consider subscribing and sharing the video with others. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.